Mei Lan Fang was born on October 22nd of 1894 in Beijing, China. Beijing is the second largest city in China, and it contains main attractions such as the Great Wall of China and the Forbidden City. Beijing is also the capital of China. The population of Beijing today is somewhere near 20 million people. Despite the large population of Beijing, Mei Lan Feng was still capable of becoming a performer in the theater. He was known as a great singer, actor, and dancer, and even tends to be known as one of the greatest of all of these things in Chinese history. Both Mei Lan Feng's grandfather and father were famous opera actors. At the age of eight, he began to study Beijing opera. At the age of 10, he debuted on stage. He was very well known for his many different female roles that he played. He would portray a woman in a way that was able to gain him international stardom. The dances he used in his many roles became very popular. He was always looking for new ways to dance and new techniques that he could use. He was able to join the Zi Lan Chang Theatrical Company at age 14. Because of his many performances with this company, he gained even more of a national popularity. Even the world outside of China was able to begin recognizing his performances, and because of him, Beijing opera became more and more popular throughout the rest of the world. He was the first to spread Beijing opera to other countries in the world. He began touring and toured Japan twice, the Soviet Union twice, and the United States once. While he was in the United States, he visited Hollywood, where he made many different friendships. On the screen now is a photo of Mei Lan Fang and Charlie Chaplin. This friendship was important in many different ways. Because of the touring, Mei Lan Fang was able to not only spread his popularity, but to also spread the idea of Beijing opera to foreign countries. Once the resistance war began in 1937, the Japanese army began to occupy Beijing. The leader of the Japanese army said that Fang had to perform for them and they appointed him to a high rank position. He did not see this as a time to celebrate and show off his talents, so he did not perform throughout the entire war. Because of his refusal to do what they wanted him to do, he was forced to live an extremely low class lifestyle until the war ended in 1945. After the war in 1946, he finally returned to where he was supposed to be, and that was in the theater. He began to do both stage and film work. He was a director and member of many different cultural organizations as well after the war. In 1949, he was named the director of Beijing Opera Theater, director of the Chinese Opera Research Institute, and vice chairman of the China Federation of Literacy and Art Circles. He also developed the Mai Lan Feng School of Pe Peking Opera, in his years of performing, he played in no less than 100 different roles. Some of his most famous roles are Bai Liang Zi in Duan Qiao, in English known as Broken Bridge, Lin Dayu in Dayu Zhenghua, in English known as Dayu Berries Flowers, Yuji in Ba Wang, Bai Ji, in English known as Farewell My Concubine, and Yang Yuan in Gui Fai Zui Zui, in English known as Concubine Gets Drunk. He was known for revolutionizing stage costume, dance, makeup, expressions, and poses. While a main part of his life was Beijing opera, he also was able to have his own social life and form a family. A marriage was arranged between him and Wang Minghua in China. In China, it is typical for marriages to be arranged between families. Mai Lan Fang lost both of his parents very young, so it was normal that he wanted to be married so that their would be somebody to care for him. Although the marriage was arranged, it actually worked very well for them, and they did have kids. They had two sons and a daughter. Mai Lan Fang was able to live a successful professional life, but also prosper in his personal life, and that is very admirable. In memory of Mai Lan Fang and his undeniable impact on not only Beijing theater, but also Beijing culture, a souvenir stamp and coin collection was released. This was the biggest event known to known to commemorate his memory. The collection has 11 gold and silver coins, 64 stamps, and 8 telephone cards. The different cards feature pictures of him before his death, some of which have never actually been seen before. The different pictures represent some milestone moments in the history of opera. There is also a Mai Lan Fang Memorial Hall Museum. 
This was where he used to live and was built into a museum in order to commemorate such an important human being in the culture of Beijing. His wife and kids even gave to many personal mementos to the museum. They gave things such as photos and letters. Unfortunately, on August 8, 1961, Mei Lan Fang passed away, but luckily all of these things are being done in order to remember him and his everlasting legacy. Mei Lan Fang left such a mark on the world of Beijing opera as well as Beijing culture, and we will all forever be thankful for that.